What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a new extension for SketchUp that basically gives you widget style navigation. And it's really powerful. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So AXYZ is a tool from Rich O'Brien that you can download from Sketchication for free that basically adds a powerful widget-based navigation system to SketchUp. Now, there's a few reasons you might use something like this, which we'll talk about in a little while. But one thing to note is you need to download it from Sketchication. You do need to make sure that you have Libfredo installed so you can download Libfredo from this page, which I'll link to in the notes down below, as well as Sketchication Tools. So Sketchication Tools is basically the Sketchication extension for SketchUp. Um, so you can find it by going to Sketchication and just clicking on this plugin store. No, uh, actually going to resources and plugin store download right here. You wanna download that and install it on your computer. But once you do that, you have access to this tool, which is gonna give you a bunch of different widget options. So let's take a look at this thing. Let's jump over into SketchUp. And so when you install and enable the add-on, it's going to look something like this. And it's basically gonna give you access to four different widgets. And really there's one overall interactive widget and then three others that are typically more just like um, limited to each one of the things that they do, right? So this one is just translation, this one's just rotation, this is just scale, and then this is all of them put together. But the way this works is you can activate the tool just by clicking right here and then mouse over things in your model. And notice how when you do this, when you first mouse over something, it's just gonna give you kind of this like gray box, right? But if I click, nothing's going to happen in here. What you need to do is you need to select the object. Now, in the case of this object, if you just want to work with one thing, all you have to do is mouse over the object and then click and it's gonna set that widget. Now. There are ways to select multiple objects. So for example, if I activate the widget right here and I hold the shift key, what that's gonna do is that's going to basically select objects that you mouse over, right? I'm just holding the shift key down like this and it's going to select multiple different objects. So you can select multiple different objects in here without actually clicking on them. Now, theoretically, you're supposed to be able to hold shift and then release to deselect objects, but um, that one's not really working for me. I'm not really sure why. I think it might be because you need to be in this kind of like implicit selection mode, right? So if you pre-select objects like this, and then you try to do that. So if I hold shift, notice how it's not doing anything. But if you're in this mode where you're picking up objects just by holding the shift key and mousing over them like this, notice how you can re-mouse over them in order to remove them from the selection, right? And when you remove them from the selection, that means that they're no longer going to be affected by the tool. So that's only gonna work in um, actual shift selection mode where you're not actually doing a shift click in order to select. But now let's talk a little bit about what this tool does. So um, let's activate this main tool right here, the object transformation widget. And so when I do that, notice how it's waiting for me to select a base point. And one thing this tool is really good at is finding all of these implicit points over your objects, right? So if I mouse over these like this, notice how all these little points are picking up. You can kind of snap to those in order to set your base point. In this case, I'm gonna mouse over this. Notice how it shows me this center of component option. That's gonna allow me to place this widget in the center of my model. But what this widget is gonna do is it's gonna give me access to multiple different tools. So you've got translation, which means that you can move an object like this um, by clicking and dragging. You can also click and then type in a value, right? So if I type in like 12 inches and hit the enter key, notice how this is gonna move this by 12 inches. And so in addition, you've also got rotate functions. So these lines around the outside are going to allow you to rotate your object right here. So notice how when I do this, this is going to rotate. And again, if I click on that and then type a value, so 45 degrees or whatever, that's going to rotate my object. You've also got options for scaling your object and so that's gonna allow you to scale your object. Um, but what's really powerful to me is these tools in the middle here, and notice how I can click and drag in order to adjust the size of the widget 
like this. So if I want it to be smaller, I can click and drag it in. Um, so you can click and drag in order to adjust the size. Where this gets really powerful to me um, is where when you see these little boxes right here, these like hollow boxes. Well, what those do is those allow you to move an object, but locked onto a plane. Right? So remember how in SketchUp, you know, if you use the move tool and then you click, sometimes your inference might put you on the blue axis, sometimes it might put you on the green axis, whatever. With this tool, if you activate it, click in here and then click and drag on that blue direction. It's only gonna move it on the blue direction, but notice how it's not gonna move it up and down, it's gonna keep it on that same plane right here, which is very powerful. So that's probably what I would use this for the most actually. Um, but let's get a little more in depth with these. One of the things that's cool about this is notice how if you tap the control key, that's going to put you in copy mode. And so when you go in copy mode like this, you can use this to create copies of objects and it's going to work for any of these tools, right? You can use the little arrows that you click and drag on in order to create copies. You can also if you use the rotate function, which I know you don't want to go in that direction, but if you tap the control key like this, it's going to create copies as a part of your rotation rather than rotating your individual or original objects. Um, you do also have a function here for mirroring. So if you click in here, notice how there's a little, uh, there's a little arrow right here that can mirror or flip your object in the different directions like this. So now let's get a little more in depth with some of the uh, some of the functions that you can use in here in order to do different things. And so one thing that you can do with the move function, right? And if you just want to access the move or the translate function, you can just go to the translation right here and just use that widget. It's basically going to be a widget that's exactly like this one, but without the rotate and scale options. But one thing that's cool about this is if I click and drag right here, right? So if I tap the control key to create a copy and then I click and drag, you can type in, um, after you've done this, you can type in a distance and a number of copies. So in this case, say I wanted these to be spaced every 30 feet. I would type in 30 feet. And then you can also type in a space and then a number of copies and X. So I could type 5X like this. And what it's going to do is it's going to create five copies at 30 feet. If I don't like this, notice how I haven't clicked off the tool. I can type in something different. So I could type in 20 feet space 3x in order to make it three copies. So this is a lot like the array tool in SketchUp, but with the ability to adjust both the distance and the number of copies at the same time. Note that's going to work the same with the rotation function, but you can use this in order to do that. Another thing that you can do is you can actually use the arrow keys. So if I activate um, this tool right here, click, and then I tap the left, right, or up arrow keys, notice what this is going to do is this is going to nudge the object like this. Now you can't set the nudge distance. Right, so I'm just tapping the left and right arrow keys right here, but what you can do, or at least that I know of, um, but if I tap the control key, notice how I can use that nudge function to actually create a copy in here, like this. So I can move this over to create the copy, then I can hit the enter key in order to finalize it. But then we could reactivate the tool right here and do the same thing in this direction. I'm gonna tap control like this in order to create this copy. So I'm gonna move this over like this I'm going to hit the enter key. Well, notice how if I type in 3x or 2x and hit the enter key, it's going to go ahead and it's going to create multiple copies using that spacing. So you can use the arrows in order to set the different rotations in here or the different, uh, you can use the arrows in order to nudge objects. And so say I was to activate the rotate tool right here, you can do the same thing with the rotate tool, right? Notice how I can tap the up and down arrow keys in order to set a rotation. So you can use this in order to quickly rotate objects inside of your 3D space using just your keyboard. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the rotation function, because this is actually pretty powerful, right? So uh, at its base, you can definitely use the rotation function to just rotate multiple different objects, right, based on a point. 
So notice how if I do that right here, um, it's just like using the regular SketchUp Rotate tool, which is cool, but not especially groundbreaking. And so if you have all of these selected and you activate the Rotate tool, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set a base point. It doesn't really matter for right now, but notice how I can rotate this. But if I tap the Shift key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna rotate these objects on their individual centers rather than um, by the whole group right here. So what that means is that means you can take multiple different objects and rotate them in place. So say we had a number of different benches like this, you can activate the Rotate tool and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start rotating this. But if I tap that shift key, notice how that's going to rotate these based on their individual centers. And in this case, it's actually not using the individual centers. What it's doing is it's using that base point that we had selected based on this object. So that's kind of interesting because what it does, and so in this case, I wanna go ahead and I wanna use this tool right here, but notice how I can take that point and if I move my mouse over here and I type in a value of like 12 inches, notice how that's gonna let me set a point off of this edge by 12 inches. But now if I use the rotate function and I tap the shift key, was what it's doing is it's rotating objects based on that reference point. It's rotating each one of these based on that reference point right here. So um, you can do that, but you can also right click with the tool active and click on individual centers. And when you do individual centers, what this is gonna do is instead of using that reference point, it's going to use the center of your object for that rotation, right? So if you right click and go to individual centers or you do a control shift with this tool active, it's going to rotate each one of those objects based on the center point right here. This is one I recommend you practice with a little bit because it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it actually works pretty good. And so let's talk about a couple more things. So the first thing is, um, say that you wanted to rotate all of these objects based on a central point. What you could do is you could activate this tool, but if you right click and click on the global median point, what this is gonna do is it's gonna find the middle of these objects that are in here. So it's gonna find whatever that middle point is between those objects. It's kind of like centered between them and you can rotate based off of that. But in addition, say that we activate this tool right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find a base point that's right in the center, but notice how we can use that mirror mode to flip all of these objects. Well, if you tap the shift key, I'm gonna right click and click on individual by reference. Notice how it'll flip all of these objects based on that reference point right here. Well, what that means is that means that if you tap the control key and do this, it's going to actually create a copy of all of those based on that reference point right here. So if we wanted to copy them again, but like up, so we're just gonna set this as our reference point right here, but we're gonna click the flip function, make sure that we're set to the uh, individual by reference, but then we're gonna tap control Notice how it's gonna create a copy of each one of those based on that reference point, right? So it's gonna create a copy of each one of these in position right here. Now, there's not a whole lot of like special stuff about the scale function. So the scale function is just gonna do exactly what it sounds like. But where this is going to be powerful is if you tap the shift key, it's going to allow you to scale based on that reference point right here. And so this is pretty powerful because it does allow those copies and all of that mirroring based on those individual points. And so there's also tools built in for setting the direction of the widgets and what they inference from when you have grouped objects like this. So if you click in here, right, you mouse over a face and then you click, it's going to align it with a surface. All right. So notice how when you tap the alt key, right here, it's gonna give you three options actually. It's gonna give you an axis reference based on the top model. That's going to align the axes based on the axes that you have in your SketchUp model right here. See how those are the same? The second option, if you tap on it, is going to give you the group or component under your mouse. So in this case, that's this whole component right here. And so when you set that, Right, if you mouse over the component itself, not the group that's inside of your model, but the actual like component that you're in, notice how this is going to align your axes based on that box right here, it's orientation. Oh, one other thing really quick is when you're working with this, um, first off, when you have these tools active, you can right click and you can see different parameters in here based on what you have selected, right? So like the rotate tool, for example, I can 
switch to x-ray mode, I can do different things. But if you right click and go into this default parameters, there's an option in here for widget can be positioned in the empty space. And if you select that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to place the widget in space like this. Um, I usually have that active um, just in case because what I could do is I could use it to set the widget over here off of this point or something like that. But you can use that in order to set the widget location in the empty space if you want to do that. All right, so definitely a different way of moving things around in SketchUp, but I think there's a lot of power there, especially with the kind of like lock to access or direction tools. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think of AXYZ? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.